Hi, I'm Dr. Cam Takaya. Today I'd like to talk to you about your microbiome. Microbiome is a fancy word for all the bacteria and yeast that live in our intestinal tract. They do a lot of things for us and they outnumber our cells by 100 to 1. They perform a lot of biochemical processes, many that we would die if we didn't have, so we need them and they may have more control over us than we have over ourselves. So balancing and supplementing our microbiome may be the most important thing we do for our health. So some of the functions that they do are help us absorb and make vitamin K, vitamin B12, as well as a bunch of others. They modulate our immune system and they also regulate our metabolism. And they also help us make and break down our neurotransmitters, which can affect our anxiety, depression, and our mood. According to studies that we're finding more and more about, suboptimal microbiome conditions can be a contributor to obesity, diabetes, heart disease, asthma, high blood pressure, autoimmune diseases of all kinds, dementia, Alzheimer's, IBS, Crohn's, uh, many cancers, and a lot more conditions. So um, unfortunately, many of our lifestyle habits kind of destroy or alter a healthy microbiome. One of those is being born by cesarean birth, which we don't have a lot of control over, but we can fix it later. Another um, crucial thing that we don't want to do as much as we can is antibiotic use, because that just wipes the whole area out pretty much. Taking NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and Tylenol. Eating genetically modified foods, that um, kills off a lot of the good ones. Using antibacterial soap all the time. Getting poor sleep. Um, chronic stressful conditions, which we all you know, are working to lessen in our lives. And then of course, not feeding them the right foods. So um, there's thousands of strains in here. I said they outnumber us by multitudes. Some are really beneficial and some are not so much. And we'd like to keep the beneficial ones with the higher numbers. So bacteroidetes, those are the good guys. And they decrease inflammation, they prevent a lot of cancers, and they increase our intestinal hormones that are called incretins that actually help us lose weight. So bacteroidetes, the good guys, thrive on certain fibers and things that we get from colorful fruits and vegetables called polyphenols. So we can also get these things in supplement form and um, other compounds that they like, like berberine, curcumin, green tea, resveratrol, but most important to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Now the other side, the firmicutes, are not as good. It's okay to have some, but we don't want them to be the major populator. They can cause us to gain weight, water retention as well as inflammation all over the body, food cravings, and definitely cause mood swings. These guys will multiply if they're fed a lot of processed food, sugars, and grains. So we try to avoid those as much as possible. So the research is still very new on this. We know that different cultures that eat different foods, that live in different geographical areas, all have a different population and different numbers and sometimes totally different species and strains in our gut. But the most important thing is having a really good variety. And there's a test that you can do to find out what your variety is, what populations you have more of or less of. So if you're interested, you could come in and get that test. Um, but most important steps to build a healthy microbiome that you want to do on a daily basis would be eating fermented foods, kombucha, sauerkraut, fermented pickles, tempeh, fermented coconut water they have now. So, I mean, there's more and more on the market. You'll go, if you go on the market, you're going to see there's a whole area in the refrigerated section that's full of fermented foods now. Um, of course, lots of colorful fruits and vegetables. Eating some bitter foods like lettuce and dandelion greens and radicchio. 
or drinking bitter teas that have the burdock root and the dandelion. And then taking a good probiotic that has many strains of bacteria in it. You want a higher percentage of bifidus rather than lactobacillus, but having some lactobacillus is good. Uh, there's a strain called H1019 that a lot of the studies are being done on that's very beneficial. And there's also lactobacillus ruteri, which is really good and beneficial for some people. Um, another thing, go organic, avoid genetically modified foods, chew your food, eat slowly, be happy when you eat. The, the happier and slower you are, the more you're in a parasympathetic um, nervous system state, therefore you're going to release more of the good hormones, absorb more of the vitamins. To not destroy the microbiome, you definitely want to avoid antibiotics, avoid the NSAIDs, limit your alcohol if you can because that actually destroys the lining of the intestine tract and keep your stress to a minimum or do stress reduction practices like yoga or heart math or something that that gets you back into that parasympathetic mode. So if you're interested in finding out the health of your microbiome, you can come in and we can do a test. Or you can come in if you're having any health issues and we can find out if the gut health is at the root cause of that issue.